Welcome to that 4x4 show. This week, our Daihatsu Terios gets its turbo. We do a really rough trail in Lesotho, and Hannes takes the Mercedes-Benz GL for a drive. Not too long ago, we had the Mercedes ML, which we used to call the Milky Lane, loosely translated, meaning soft serve. So now we have the GL. Is this good enough for a real 4x4 trail? Let's find out. The first thing you notice is the size of the thing and the wheels, the 21 inch AMG wheels, the big twin exhaust finished in a not so subtle chrome, the trendy daytime running lights, the beautiful swoopy lines, the tinted windows, and then there is the, no wait, let Hannes explain that part. This Mercedes is powered by a V8 twin turbo charged engine. It produces 320 kilowatts of power and 700 Newton meters of torque. The Mercedes tips the scales at 2.5 tons, yet it will sprint from 0 to 100 kilometers an hour in just 5.4 seconds, while the top speed is limited to 250 kilometers an hour. In a nutshell, this big chunk of metal is stupidly fast in a straight line. It's massively rapid in any situation, but it especially likes fast open sections. If you give it free reins, it hurtles to the horizon in a most unflustered, most refined, yet most rapid manner. That doesn't mean it's useless in the corners. Besides the Airmatic S suspension that regulates the Benz's posture in the corners, it also has a new active curve system. In real terms, this means that this SUV feels more like a speedboat than a tugboat. This fancy system, which is standard on the GL500, uses its active lateral stabilizers for the front and rear axles to reduce the roll angle in corners, providing new levels of response and more fun behind the steering wheel. It also improves the overall ride, and in a tough off-road situation, the system can decouple the stabilizers to improve 4x4 ability. But don't get us started on fancy electronic gizmos. This Merc is so lardy da it actually tells you when to stop for a cup of coffee. It's called Attention Assist. The computer monitors and learns driver inputs over a period of time. If the electronics pick up some obvious deviations from the set parameters that conform to the patterns of drowsiness, the system will activate with a discrete electronic bell and a cup of coffee will appear on the instrument panel, obviously indicating to the driver that it's time for a cup of java or just a break. Our particular Benz apparently has quite the appetite for coffee. The attention assist system's little coffee cup was permanently on display in our car. But you've got to give it to the folks at Benz. This interior sure is sumptuous, plush, and very well la di -da. This GL's interior actually compares good with the S-Class, but you've got seven seats. There is a lot of space, and the occupants are enveloped by luxurious leather and fancy aluminium. Okay, so you need a degree in Mercedes GL before you will properly understand the tricks of all the tech. But the tech in here is really advanced. The climate control system that can probably keep your left foot warm and the right one cool. The command system with voice recognition, super sound system, navigation and an ingenious 360 degree camera setup. In an SUV of this caliber, you'd expect the front seats to be electrically adjustable, as they indeed are. But in the GL, even the second and third rows have electric functions. The last row of pews fold flat into the rear cargo area floor, leaving a truly massive boot. We don't think it's the kind of boot that will ever see a water tank, drawer system and other overland style McGafters. More likely golf clubs, school bags and maybe a VIP security guard or two. Let's forget about all the fanciness, the leathers, all the buttons. This is actually a 4x4 with low range. Let's go and see if it can do the off-roading. Yes, Siri, the GL500 gets a low range transfer case and thanks to the Airmatic air suspension, up to 306 millimeters of ground clearance. It is also equipped with fancy traction control systems, but it doesn't get the three locking differentials of the previous generation GL. So can it still conquer a really, really tough obstacle? Okay, let's try low range. 
Maximum right height. Well, let's try. I don't know if it's going to make it, but let's give it a go. And, and yes, Hannes and the GL have conquered the impossibly difficult obstacle. Okay, okay, so it was a really easy obstacle. But with the optional AMG Sports Pack fitted to this GL, this Benz should best stick to tar and good dirt roads. With the 21 inch wheels with low profile tires and not so much articulation on the suspension, it ac actually handles the off roading quite well because of the ground clearance with the air suspension. Which, alas, brings us to the price of this amazing machine and to the optional extras fitted to this GL. The basic car costs 1.1 million rand. All the extras add up to over 100,000 rand. But then again, if you are a real player in the GL class of game, 100,000 rand is probably an inconsequential detail. This brings us to a conundrum, an irrelevant point to ponder. Do you buy this GL because you want to drive off-road? Nope. Do you buy this GL because you are a soccer mom who feels the ML is just so been there, done that? Maybe, but probably not likely. Or do you buy this Merc when you are a VIP kind of person who is into blue lights and convoy driving? Hmm, that sounds about right. We actually decided to do a highly scientific test on this car to see if it's suitable for the VIP brigade. Join us later as Hannes puts the big Merc through its VIP protection um, paces. So you have this fancy quick 4x4, where to now? I'll tell you what, somewhere close, somewhere exciting. Let's go to Lesotho, probably the most understated and undervisited 4x4 destination. Welcome to Lesotho, a spectacular piece of southern Africa that will leave you mesmerized with the endless mountain vistas. But it's also a hard, tough place with mountain passes that can make grown men cry and fancy 4x4s break down with irreparable damage. And so it was exactly the challenge a group of adventurers from the 4x4 Community Forum was looking for when they headed to the infamous Letele Pass earlier this year in icy cold conditions. The group comprised five Land Rovers and three Jeeps and the brave souls headed to the pass after spending their first night camping in minus 7 degrees Celsius temperatures. According to Lesotho legend, the last 4x4 group completed the infamous Letele Pass in 2000 and back then, this group reported that it was pure madness. As the convoy slowly headed onwards, locals on foot met them with an assortment of comments like, The road is not, and air you crazy. Real encouraging comments. The group soon faced their first challenges, building roads and negotiating scary side slopes and frozen rivers. The going was extremely slow. Then another major obstacle loomed, a field of boulders, some as big as a minibus taxi in places 50 meters wide with ice and water and drop-offs. This was the real deal. <laughs> yeah, this is a problem. <laughs> it proved impossible to negotiate and the group camped en route that night, planning to find an alternative route up the mountain. That night, the temperature dropped to minus 15 degrees Celsius. After some repairs to injured 4x4s, the group found an alternative route to the actual base of the pass. But that took another entire day of road building and river gorging. Eventually, the 4x4 community lads had to throw in the towel. The Tele Pass would require much more time and planning to conquer. 
So if you are looking for an extreme 4x4 challenge, this is very much it. In winter, you need to go very well prepared for the extreme cold and you need to bring a gun to the gunfight. No standard 4x4 will survive here, never mind conquer the pass. You'd also need at least two weeks of time to try and get up this mountain. Check out our Facebook page for more information and some photographs. Looks like those guys had a good time. And by the way, I can tell you, I took a Galandewagen into Lesotho once and I got it stuck like a champion. But anyway, another story for another day. But if you don't want to damage your car turning around rocks, he has a good tip for you. Right here we have a little practical demonstration for normal day-to-day -day driving and also for your 4x4 driving. How often have you seen cars that have got these scratches on the side and you wonder, Mama, what was this person thinking? Let me explain to you what happens when you turn with your vehicle. If you make a 90 degree either left or right, please remember that your front wheels and your back wheels do not follow the same path. Your back wheels are always going to take a shorter route than what your front wheels do. So what we're going to show you now is how the tracking goes. Here is your front wheel track, all right? And here is the rear wheel. Now that's almost a meter of space. So when you negotiate around a pole, around a boulder, or around a tree, bear that in mind. So you drive past the obstacle first, make sure that it's past the B pillar of the car. And once it's past the B pillar, it will be safe for you to now execute your turn. And in that way, you're going to avoid scratching or hooking or damaging your vehicle when you're turning. And so we approach our obstacle. And remember, B pillar, once you've passed the obstacle, it is safe for you to execute your turn and in so doing, avoid any vehicle damage. So you remember our Terios. Now, not the same anymore. He has that same Terios with a turbo. Last week, we introduced you to the Daihatsu Terios. A little 4x4 that has a surprisingly big 4x4 heart. We also concluded that the little Terios needed some man-upping or something like that. Thankfully, we got hold of a complete turbocharger kit with all the brackets and pipes and intercooler and the whole shebang. And we organized to take it to a company called All Leading Brands, or ALB in short in Grudeput. This company specializes in the fitment of big old turbochargers to just about any engine. The little Daihatsu soon made its way onto ALB's dyno for a before power and torque assessment and then the process of stripping down the engine and fitting the turbo bit started in earnest. Then came the call. Lads at ALB had picked up a rather major problem. The turbocharger kit was a local development for the Daihatsu Materia Turbo, of which only a limited number were made and sold here. The Materia only has front wheel drive and the engine also sits transversely in the engine bay and the intercooler is mounted on top of the engine. In the Terios, the engine though is mounted longitudinally and the four-wheel drive configuration also makes for a lot of other detail differences between the two Daihatsus. What it boils down to was that the turbocharger kit was almost completely unusable in the Terios. Only the turbo itself and about three brackets could be used. A lot of parts would have to be machined and ALB did not have the infrastructure to handle this in-house. So we needed a new engine build partner. We had previously worked with Steve's Auto Clinic Centurion, which forms part of the greater Steve's Auto Clinic franchise network. Armed with their own machining tools, they agreed to tackle this unique modification job. Over the next month, a box full of new parts were specially created for the Terios. 
including a custom high-performance exhaust. A bigger intercooler was sourced that was mounted in front of the radiator, so there was no need for an air intake on the bonnet. The process was not without its issues. The small turbo boosted at too high a pressure, so the Steve's Auto Clinic men made some modifications to cap the boost at 0.5 bar. Finally, the numbers came up. Now remember, it was 77 kilowatts and 140 newton meters of torque. And now, 135 kilowatts of power and 225 newton meters of torque. But there was no time to waste though. The little Terios was soon off to Motivia, destined to travel on a truck to Cape Town, where it would meet up with the enthusiastic Maniac manufacturing crowd for the next stage of its custom man-upping. Rumour has it that Porsche was testing 911 Carreras between Pofada and Uppington, and one driver was consistently clocking two kilometres an hour faster than everybody else. And I went and analysed why, and it turned out that one of the drivers, or the fastest driver, had actually folded in his mirrors. So if it can affect your top speed, does it affect your fuel consumption? Let's find out. As always, we use the Toyota Hilux 3-litre D4D for this test. With its mirrors pinned back like Brian Habana's ears when he smells the goal line, the Hilux tackled the standard 95km test route. Okay, so we're driving along with the mirrors uh, turned in to see what the effect would be on the fuel consumption. And uh, the downside of this, of course, is I can't see what's going on behind me uh, through the Arabian mirrors. The only one I have is at the back here, but it's, it's kind of uh, uncomfortable. So this is not really advisable, and that only to save a couple of rand. I don't think it's worth it. But the proof of the pudding is in the eating. So let's find out if the Hilux actually saved fuel with the mirrors folded back or not. So the difference is 10.2 to 10.4 litres per 100 kilometres. Not a huge difference. But the big problem now is now you fold in your mirrors, you can't see what's coming up behind you. And if you do have a canopy, the only mirror that you still have, which is your rear view mirror, is also obscured. So not advisable. Because of the cost of the GL, what are the chances of this car ever seeing an off-road trail? Hannes thought the best application would be for the Blue Light Brigade, and he came up with some tests that proved exactly his point. Earlier in the program, we introduced you to the Mercedes-Benz GL500, a 320-kilowatt mega SUV with more technological wonders than the Space Shuttle. We also concluded that maybe this 1.2 million rand GL would make for the perfect mode of transport for the discerning VIP customer. Clearly, we had to put this conclusion to the test. So we devised some really tough experiments to find out if this Merc can go the VIP mile. Our first test is very technical. Hannes is strapped into the rear seat and he has to try and read a newspaper while on the move. So the test proceeds as planned and yes, although Hannes reckons that a standard format newspaper may pose a few paging challenges, the smaller tabloid format certainly works a treat. This Benz gets a very spiffy 360 degree camera system. It comprises four cameras, of which the images are combined to offer a 360 bird's eye kind of view from above the Merc. And yes, there is that would-be assassin, clear as daisies. I see you. In this highly scientific acceleration test, we enrolled the services of our myth-busting Hilux and sent it off on a short acceleration run over a distance of about 300 meters. Sure, the diesel Hilux would obviously be slower than the Benz. The big question was how much slower? And that's 93.5 kilometers per hour for the Hilux. Right, so now it's the Benz's turn. Same test, same distance. And off it goes with all those wild stallions in Stampede. And 120 kilometers an hour. So over such a short distance, the Benz was almost 30 kilometers an hour faster. So yes, it will definitely be able to outrun most assassins. This Benz is fitted with the optional Distronic speed control system. It uses a radar system to detect distances to cars in front of the Merc, 
and will adjust the GL speed to keep the distance as prescribed by the driver. Yeah, this is perfect for convoy driving. It's backing off on its own. Controls the speed. I'm actually gonna do nothing. We'll see if she starts slowing down here for the turn off. Okay, it's stopping itself. It's keeping the distance and her speed. So this Mercedes is just the ticket for driving in a VIP Conway then. Although the width of emergency lanes around South Africa varies, it's safe to say that the Mercedes GL's 2.1 meter wide posture is well, rather wide. At 2.1 meters, this car is actually a little bit too wide for an emergency lane. But there's a plan. If you fold the mirrors back, you can actually travel in the emergency lane. So there you have it. It even fits into the emergency lane by the mere press of a button. If you are into the VIP kind of scene, you need a ride that fits the job description and that will suitably impress your fans, minions and fellow VIP persons alike. So with that famed three-pointed star on the nose, those beautiful 21-inch AMG wheels combined with a good helping of chrome and window tinting, this big Mercedes has a whole lot of flash appeal in the big cities. We came to the conclusion after serious scientific testing and consideration that this car is definitely VIP friendly. Well, there you have it, the ultimate VIP SUV. Next week, we take a drive in a new powerful Jeep and we also show you how to comfortably negotiate over loose rocks. And in the meantime, I'm off to Botswana and Zambia, but please, guys, keep left and pass right. Catch all the latest motoring news in the Leisure Wheels magazine. If you want more information about that 4x4 show, find us on Facebook. There you will also find more information about that 4x4 trip in conjunction with Leisure Wheels magazine.